Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we will look at the mix and yield variance, and I will show you how to make quick work of a challenging Section A objective test question. Now, if you are a little bit sketchy on the ideas behind the mix and yield variance, please go to my previous video on this topic. You can find the link below. Okay, so watch that video before you come to this. Okay, we are in the specimen exam of September 2016. We're in section A, objective test questions. Imagine you press next in the exam and you see this doozy of a question. Okay, this question is about mix and yield. At this point, please pause the video, try this question at home, and then come on back here and we will do it together. Welcome back, guys. So you've tried this question at home and you've discovered for yourself that it really is a challenging question. First thing you probably did, as many of us do, if not all of us, is we will check the model solution when we are done. And my first impression is, oh my goodness, about 10 calculations to perform in order to get this answer correct. Guys, I'm going to show you a different way to do it. We don't need to go through all of these calculations. We can use a logical approach. Okay, so let's just delete this and start over. First thing to recognize is that the solution does not have numbers. There are no numbers here. So that's an important clue. Maybe we can solve this question with logic only. Okay, we don't have to perform calculations. Let's review what those variances are all about, then we will make quick work of this question. So, if we are looking, everybody, pardon my artwork, mix variance first. We are looking at the ratio of the inputs. And we need to compare the standard mix to the actual mix. And because there are no calculations, maybe we can just do this logically. So let's do mix variance first, then we'll come back and do yield. Let's come back to the to the to the question. And we have to find the inputs. We have to find which input is the cheap, which is the expensive then we have to find the actual. So we find the standard first, the actual second. And as we read the story, we see in order to make 19 liters of X, it takes eight of A, 12 of B. So there's a bit of a normal loss there, but doesn't concern me at this point. We've identified two inputs, A and B, eight of A, 12 of B. That is the ratio, 8 to 12, okay, or 3 to 4. Now, if we read the next sentence, we can identify which is the cheap, which is the expensive input. And chemical A costs 20 per liter. Chemical B costs 25. So check that out, everybody. That's the cheaper of the two. That's the expensive. Okay, let's come back down to this little table that we made. So we have standard A, B. Okay, that was eight to 12. That's the cheap, that's the expensive. Now, let's dig around in the question for the actual inputs. How much material did we actually use in production? Okay. Can we find that? Sure we can. During September, actual results showed that we got 1,850 of output, but I don't need that yet, using a total input of 900A, 1100B. Let's just put those numbers side by side. Now if we look at actual, product A, product B, 900 and 1100. 
Oh, look at that. <clears throat> if we drop the zeros, if we drop the 100s, Now we see nine versus 11. So using logic, we can see that the company used a greater percentage of product A, of input A, and a lower percentage of product B. A is the cheaper stuff, okay? So they used more of the cheap, less of the expensive. Therefore, the mix variance, everybody, is favorable. Let's now move on to the yield. And now we need to look at the actual output of finished goods. And if we can draw our process again, the yield variance is looking at the inputs versus the output. Let's find out how much goes into one unit and how much we get out. Then we'll compare that to the actual. Okay, so if we come back to our question here, to produce 19 units, we have to put in 8 plus 12. Guys, that is 20. So 20 goes in, 19 comes out. How much did we actually get, everybody? We got 18. We got 18, 500. Look at that, we got 18, 500 out. How much did we put in? We put in 900 plus 1,100. Guys, that is 2,000. So we put in 2,000. So, the yield variance is looking at in versus out. Guys, the standard says we should put in 20 liters, we get 19. The actual results show that we put in 2,000 and we got out 18,500. Okay, now you see what's going on here. Put a decimal place there, put a decimal place there and it's easy to compare to the standard. So we put in 2,000 units of input, which should yield 19. Didn't yield 19, it yield eight, yielded 18.5. So we got fewer units from our inputs. Everybody, yield variance is adverse. Okay, so which combination from the solution works for us? The mix was favorable, yield was adverse, the answer is D. Guys, we just solved quite a difficult question, but if you stay cool, if you step back and look at the big picture, very often when it's a difficult question, there is an easy shortcut. And here we saw that. We did not need to do the math as the model answer showed us. Instead, we used logic. Okay, you guys. Section A, difficult stuff there. Do not underestimate it. Make sure you practice all these past published Section A objective test questions before your exam. And good luck. This is Steve. Bye for now.